U.S. Navy leadership, Mwah. also known as khakis, also known as welcome aboard, shipmate. Let me show you around. When I'm referring to leadership, I'm referring to your chiefs, senior chiefs, master chiefs, your divisional officers. When these individuals are doing their job with integrity, they are an essential part into keeping good order in the United States Navy. Stop the track. But what happens when they don't do their job with integrity? Let's get started. Now my whole team split up. I'm like, damn, man, what the fuck? These young bucks making them bucks. We at the whole city with us. It's like party city with us. What's popping, YouTube? 9 11 the baby go. Welcome to the Go Farm. I got something for you. Today's video was brought to you by me. But normally I find myself making content based off of the questions that you guys ask me in the comment section. So if in the future you would like to see a video based off a question that you may have, make sure to ask me in the comment section below after you've liked this video and subscribed to the channel. Chiefs, officers, and the bullshit that they do. Five things that I want to warn you guys about that you're likely to experience if you join the Navy. Quick disclaimer, because you know I gotta, I gotta watch my ass. This does not apply to every khaki in the Navy. This applies to the khakis that it applies to. Now fuck them disclaimer. Let's get started with number one. They often abuse power. Harpening back to that joke I made at the beginning of this video, it's very common for E7s and above to be fucking E1s and E2s that just joined the Navy. That's right, if your little girl just joined the Navy, there's a pretty good chance she might be getting her ass clapped by a chief right now. Or above, depending on how hot she is. Oh, no, 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 no. This, is, this ain't one of those channels where we're going to sugarcoat it. What I've noticed with a lot of women that tend to join the military, they oftentimes look at khakis as somewhat of the military's version of a sugar daddy. But it's not just dick they're expecting to get from them. Oftentimes, junior sailors want to get a step above their competition. And corrupt leadership knows this. Corrupt leadership uses their influence to get easy pussy. Fucking the shit out of your little girl that just graduated boot camp. I'm talking about fucking a dog shit out of her ass. Primarily what I have seen is males in leadership positions that's taking advantage of females that are junior enlisted sailors. And what tends to happen is that these females tend to get good evaluations that they didn't necessarily earn. Or a lot of times they can get away with murder. Things that would get this person an ass chewing, not gonna give her an ass chewing. It's gonna give her an ass clap. And these type of unduly relationships can have a domino effect in the command. Now, while it is possible for an E6, that's not a khaki, but he can still be in a leadership position to have an unduly relationship with a junior enlisted personnel, we on the khaki's ass on this video. But yes, they do it too, but we on the khaki's ass. The second thing that you need to understand, their number one concern is oftentimes themselves. Now, being in a leadership position, you have many responsibilities, but one of your prime responsibilities are the people that's underneath you. Oh, but don't get it confused. Their number one concern more often than not is their goddamn selves. Now, with you being new to the Navy, they'll oftentimes talk a good game. Hey, if anything happened, make sure to call me. That way, you know, if it has to go up to the captain, I can defend you. If you get caught drink, if you drinking and driving, make sure make, make sure to call me uh first. Or uh, if you get if you get arrested, make sure to let me know. That way I can kind of block some of the attacks that's gonna be coming your way. Bullshit. Most of the time, they not fucking concerned about you. They're concerned about, you remember what I did earlier? Checking their own ass. Because especially in situations where you fuck up, the higher ups above them are gonna be asking them questions that they're expecting an answer to. They're gonna be asking them dumb shit like, so why was he out at three o'clock in the morning? And while yes, these questions are fucking dumb, they just wanna get as many answers from you as possible so it looks like that they have answers when the people above them are asking them stupid ass questions. Which segs way into my next point. They will throw you under the bus to save themselves. A lot of these people in leadership, especially chiefs, they ain't got no fucking skill, trade, or fucking degree outside of the Navy. Not all, but you gotta understand, a lot of these motherfuckers went straight out of high school into the Navy. They got comfortable in the Navy and didn't really pursue any type of skill, education, or trade outside of it. They just went up the ranks in the Navy. Which means they're not trying to get their ass kicked out prematurely over your goofy ass. Especially if it's you that fucked up. And I'm not saying that they should risk their career for your goofy ass. What I am saying is a lot of them will gaslight you like they will have your back in a case of an emergency. Even emergencies that's your fault that you strictly dropped the ball on. And the reality of it is most of them just want you to give them a heads up so they can save their own ass and then throw you under the bus in the process. The way they see it, you are just a number. You are young and you got a lot of life to you. You can bounce back from this. But these guys on the other hand, these chiefs, these officers, they look at it like they've invested too much time in this shit and ain't about to just throw it out, out in the fucking gutter for you. They'll never tell you that though. 
but I will, which is why you should subscribe to the channel. And like the damn video while you at it, man. Let's go on to my next point. They will manipulate you to save their own ass. I'm gonna tell you something that happened to a coworker of mine literally two days ago at work. So here we are working at an airport on one of the Navy installations. And according to the rules, we can't let people board the plane with alcohol. We have this entire squadron of people about to board the plane, but the majority of them are in civilian clothing. They have to send their bags through an x-ray. It's a fucking airport. And in this one guy's luggage, we see two bottles of cognac. And me and my coworker give this man a chance to be honest with us. <laughs> Sir, do you got alcohol in your bag? Hmm? No, no, no. Bruh. Sir, we see alcohol in your bag. We're going to need to confiscate your bag. Now, this is what my female coworker was saying. I was shadowing her, teaching her how to do the job. She wasn't being rude, wasn't being an asshole, just doing her job as respectfully as she can while still being stern and not a pushover. The man reluctantly goes inside of his luggage and pulls yeah. one of the bottles out. He made sure we didn't see what else was in the luggage, but he pulled one of the bottles out. And then the girl goes to ask him to pull out the second bottle. He manipulates the situation and tries to make a big scene by saying, you want to put a senior chief at the end of that sentence? Now this guy is not only not in uniform, not a part of our command, but he's also in the wrong. He makes a big scene, accuses the girl of being angry and rude. I put it on baby Jesus, she was not. But what he was trying to do was a common tactic that a lot of military leadership does when they're in the wrong. It's to try to get you riled up in your emotions so that you can do or say something so you can be in the wrong. That way, when you bring the issue up further up the chain of command, the moment word gets out that you, the junior enlisted personnel, did something wrong, this damn khaki over here could have killed 12 puppies and ain't nobody gonna give a damn because you're gonna be the highlight and all of the energy is gonna be on you. Unfortunately, that's how the politics work in the Navy. Leadership are not perfect and oftentimes they're wrong about shit. Don't let those brown pants that they're wearing automatically make you think that they're responsible people. A lot of these motherfuckers were just good on tests and they knew how to play politics. Does not mean that they never necessarily had good leadership skills to begin with. And you have to be aware of their psychological manipulation if you join the Navy, because you're more than likely gonna run across some asshole that's gonna be in the wrong, and they know if this situation escalates, and it's your story versus their story, as long as you don't let your emotions get the best of you and get out of frame and say or do something stupid, you would most likely have the winning argument if it ever were to go up above both of you guys' head, which is why they're gonna try to manipulate you to do something stupid. Don't do anything stupid. Be aware of the games that they're playing, keep your emotions in order, and psychologically whoop their ass. And the next thing is that they are quicker to hold their inferiors accountable before their equals or their superiors. One of the biggest reasons they're gonna be quicker to hold you accountable is because the things that you do reflect their leadership. Again, that's how the politics in the Navy work. In the future, I will be making a video explaining to you exactly how politics in the Navy work, so make sure to subscribe to the channel and look out for that. But if you do something dumb in the Navy, it's not you just did something dumb. Big Navy is gonna look at the people that's wearing khaki pants and be like, why did your sailor just do something dumb? In other words, you didn't just do something stupid. Your leadership did something stupid too. But I also wanna give you the insight that when it comes to their equals, their fellow chiefs, and especially their superiors, their senior chiefs, master chiefs, their officers, and by the way, this applies for officers too. Don't think for a second that officers are just angels. The only reason that I've been gravitating more towards chiefs in this conversation is because chiefs more directly work with enlisted personnel in the Navy while the officers just smile and wave like the goddamn penguins of Madagascar. They tend to not be as hands-on as chiefs are. They don't feel like they're as responsible for their equals and definitely not their superiors. Even though we should all be holding each other accountable to our duties and responsibilities, the way that I've seen it in the Navy, respect goes up and accountability goes down. Typically, the people that get held accountable the most are the people that's beneath you. People rarely hold their equals and superiors accountable. People oftentimes show more respect towards their equals and their superiors while disrespect is common to go for their inferiors. Is that fucked up? Yes, but I'd be lying to you if I said that wasn't the normal in the Navy. And one thing I'm not gonna do on this channel is lie to you. I know a lot of this can sound negative, but I just wanna be honest with you guys. If you're not sure whether or not you wanna join the Navy, be sure to watch this video. It'll give you the three clues on whether or not the United States Navy is for you. 9-11 the baby go. Thank you guys so much for joining the Go Farm. Be sure to drop down in the comment section and let me know what you would like to see next, or let me know one thing that you think I missed on this list. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.